Bow. What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with another episode of Ask Brand Man, where I answer questions that you ask in the comment section below. So make sure you keep those questions coming. Just make sure you remember the golden rule that the quality of the answers that you receive are dictated by the quality of the questions that you ask. It's the mat work. gonna do these things every single Wednesday and of course I might be back with my daddy cap because I got kids and let's go ahead and hop into question numero uno Eddie Augustine says great video appreciate it here is my question is it worth promoting to cheaper countries to get cheaper marketing and then go perform in these markets I want to make sure I answer this uh, this correctly um, are you saying, hey, if I'm in somewhere in the United States, is it worth performing in Italy for sake, right? Uh, uh, for example, we've seen people uh, build audiences in my, in my agency or in Brand Man Network in Italy and get cheaper ads, right? So that's what you mean by cheaper ads, I mean cheaper marketing, and then go perform in those countries? I think that answer is yes, right? If that's what you're saying, should I build a fan base cheaply and then go perform in that fan to that fan base, which means you're probably gonna make money from it? Um, now, how feasible is that for you? That's the real thing, right? How hard is it for you to go get over there and start to curate that that uh, fan base? Uh, quick story: I met Russ before he was Russ. Um, he didn't even, I, 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 if I think of the timeline correctly, he was not on the time um, on SoundCloud yet, right? Dope performance. It was two dudes that night, really dope performances. Um, and I was like doing interviews with artists. I walk up to him and I'm like, yo, can I catch an interview with you sometime, man? Let me get your number. Would you whoop? Would love to talk to you. And you know, he was like, yeah, <laughs> that actually never happened though. He never, uh, we actually never had the interview, but he was like, um, yeah, man, like, yeah, I appreciate the feedback and everything. Um, I'm actually gonna go over to Paris to perform, right? Um, in like this weekend or something. I'm like, whoa, for me, that was mind blowing at the time. First of all, he was already, he was at the show that maybe 10, 20 people were at. Now I gotta give it 10, 20, 30 people at, but it wasn't really about the artists because there was like multiple artists there. And the fact that he was going to Paris early on, it was, it was interesting. Right? But what I found out later on, that became a big part of his strategy where he really hit Europe first. He saw his music was popping in, in Europe, right? And he got over there to nurture that fan base, do shows, actually got paid for shows. Right? And that was him early on. He built up that way. If you look at somebody like 6 9 he built up in Russia. Uh, really early on, he was on pages like, fuck them. And, and he did a, a, a tour in Russia popping before he really hit in the US. He, he didn't have a movement like that. He had a movement on social media in the US. His music and touring was all happening on in the uh in like Russia, Eastern Europe. So you can go you can go check. I did video about that early on before he even really, really blew up. So it's very much so worth it. I also interviewed Ryan Leslie. He went over back in the days before heavily using social media and he built his audience in Europe cheaply. All right. Um and part of the cheaply was not I'm just running ads. He was, um, it was just cheaper because people didn't get as much attention from U.S. artists at that time. And that's still a thing, right? And the fact that he gave just a little extra real person effort in and stayed with people at the shows to talk to him, allowed him to build a fan base quicker than so many other people, right? So um, the answer is yes, man. I wanted to give you context and answers, but I'll say this to end it. There's a lot of record labels whose strategy is to simply start building some artists out over in Europe, right? Until they can get the bigger budgets. But you have to validate, one, the product and the artist. Two, as long as you have a base, you're good. Doesn't matter how cheaply you build the base, right? And you can figure out how to monetize it later. And oftentimes you can use that to as a springboard to go to the US or whatever, the, the major market that you're trying to get attention to but you'll be better off, right, than the artist who's just trying to perform in that major mar market and doesn't have an audience, right? And you might not be popping. They're, they're superficially popping in, in the major market. You're not popping in that market, but you got a real audience. You'll be good, bro. Like you, you, you will be happy. We go through the exact same thing because 
we have artists all over the world where there's marketers who's on, who are only mu moving and shaking in whatever their city is and they're trying to climb that ladder. Meanwhile, oh, we got a client, we got a client, we got a client, we got a client, right? Use the world, it's out there. So number two, Kyle Dadian, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Correct me with pronunciation below, man. But he says, finally, someone is saying this. Don't understand people who want you to post five pics of artwork before the song is released. It's actually a comment, but I wanted to add context to this. I talked about in the video that, especially when you're early on, nobody's checking for all this stuff that you do pre-release. They really aren't. So get to it. Release the song and then do things after you release the song. So every ounce of attention that you do create, whether it's a new post or a, a new ad and all or whatever it is, it goes back to your funnel, which eventually goes to your song. Like it doesn't it doesn't make sense to get somebody's attention. I'm, I'm spending a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars on an Instagram ad teasing this song that nobody knows about, and the song's not even out. And then when the song finally comes out. I have to hope that I get their attention again, which means I'm probably gonna have to pay for it, all right? Go ahead and have it there and available. So when you have people's attention, you can squeeze every little bit of it out there, uh, there is, and maximize it. That's it, all right? So those people who say, do this amount of posts before, and they're not, they're not considering your audience, all right? Your level of fan base, if you don't have a fan base to actually organically post and 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 um and create any type of suspense, it's it's not gonna do too much for you. A lot of these people are just giving you something to do, right? And making you feel like you did something, so they maybe you know get paid <laughs> for giving you those answers. So I, I would actually avoid a lot of that advice. Um, who says you have to do X, Y, and Z before you post without consideration? Um, next question. Can YouTube promotions help? Are they reliable? Yes, yes, yes. Um, David Dot, yes. I'm just gonna put YouTube like this though. All right, you have your funnel. YouTube promotion is usually the tip top of the funnel in most cases. You're not gonna see great action in terms of driving an amazing amount of engagement in a lot of cases. Right, you can see uh, you can see it happen, but you're not gonna and drive a lot of people over to another platform and and to stick to your fan base. The best that you'll get a lot of times from YouTube ads is achieve, achieving an industry average comment and like ratio, and then on top of that, you'll receive subscribers. And you have to do enough of them to know how the um, the ad is performing in terms of I got this many subscribers on this song and I got that many subscribers from, uh, from on another song. We've taken people from zero to a thousand subscribers off of like eight, mm, no, a thousand dollars, about a thousand dollars, right? We've seen that happen, but we also spent three, four thousand dollars and only seen somebody's subscribers go up like 300 people. You get what I'm saying? So that's something that you can gauge and that helps, right? Then, then move down the funnel, but for most part, it's gonna be a top of the funnel thing, which means you're just looking for a little bit of views and awareness. They might not even click into your video. They just see the ad through, um, they see the ad and that's it. So they just get used to hearing the song. Maybe they hear it three times and then cl go click over, or maybe they just hear it there, but then they see a Facebook ad because you're targeting something similar um, on that platform. And now I'm starting to make connect connections but don't expect much out of a, a YouTube um, ad promotion. In most cases, I wouldn't look to start there, right? You, unless you have a music video and then you're running a campaign that includes other platforms. But when anybody says, hey, I got a video, and if I have to just put it on one thing and I have to run some ads, I'm just gonna run YouTube ads, which are Google ads, and then do nothing else, I say good luck to you, because it's almost as, good as a play, playlist campaign, right? You're gonna get these surface level views, surface level listens, but you're not gonna see much happen after that. All right, so that's my answer to that, David Dot. Last question slash conversation to engage, because Corey actually answered, this guy the prophet, he said, how would I create a pixel if I'm driving people to a link um, for my single on Spotify? Corey says the right answer, right? You can either have that intermediary link, a toned in smart URL, or you can create a landing page that pixels it, right? And make it look like a smart URL, or even do a quick little redirect. You can do all those things. But here's the truth. 
All right, the prophet says, look, I might lose people because I have to click again. That's the reality because you had somebody go. All right, you had somebody who could have went, all right, to the song from your ad, but now you added this extra barrier in between. Yes, that's the reality. However, if you can get people through this, the quality of the data is gonna be so much higher, number one. And if you're spending money, it's worth having that quality data. If I spend $1,000, right, I might, I might have gotten short term 200 more listens from just going straight to, from the ad to the song. Adding that intermediary link, I might have lost 200 people, but having that quality of data from people who are willing to go through those hurdles right, is going to be better. Um, having that quality of data just from a standpoint of being able to pixel it, period. Because <laughs> what am I thinking? You're running an ad straight to Spotify. With the fact that you're, you, you can't collect data at all, it's just not even worth it, right? Last tip, though. A lot of these um, smart URLs, toned ins, um, hyped dits, and those, that category of type of links that they have, what you'll find is at first, right, you have, they have to click into their link. But a lot of them are starting to have a capability where once you get that data and they've ran through that link before, the next time somebody clicks on your ad, they'll go straight to Spotify if that was what they chose when they clicked your link earlier, right? Or they'll go straight to Apple Music. So now you're not even receiving any of that friction of that click through. You get what I'm saying? So even doing that one time again, it's far better to invest in doing the right action short term because it's gonna create better action long term. You're gonna save money long term. And eventually <laughs> you'll start going on, you know, when you see the graphs, matter of fact, let me just erase this, it's getting messy. When you have the graph, right? Long term, it might look like this, but you, you're collecting the data, you're making the right actions, and now everything hits that curve, right? Where these other people are doing like this, right? I go straight up, ooh, but guess what? I gotta start from scratch next time, and I gotta go straight up, and I gotta go straight up. So nothing builds on top of each other, and you're just starting at the same point again and again and again. Right, no strategy, none of the right actions, not getting real data, nothing that can help you inform and become sharper, cheaper, and, and create more fans. Right, so yes, you need to, to, to do the pixel situation if you're running ads, otherwise, honestly, you're wasting your money. All right, that's it for this episode of Ags Brand Man. Again, make sure you ask any questions in the comment section below and we're doing these every wednesday if you have any feedback any comments make sure y'all add those things as well and oh my bad my bad my bad the question of the day is drunk beats saying just one question what shall i do with the subscribe button <laughs> i think you know i think you know what to do hit that subscribe button